Okay, so. Uh, I try to tell people very plainly, straightforwardly, that you live at the uh, end of the Bible. You live in the new heaven and new earth. That's described in the Bible. You live at the in the new heaven and new earth. All of prophecy has been entirely fulfilled. There are no events that you are awaiting to see. I know that sounds very crazy. Uh, we live after the time in which Jesus returned. I know that, that sounds really nuts to a person. Um, but there's a lot of ways I have of proven this. But here is something I was thinking. The end of the world doctrine comes from Christianity. Okay? This doctrine is put forward by Christianity. Has Christianity proven themselves to be trustworthy individuals when it comes to the Bible? And I'm really speaking to the Israelite messianic individual, you know, the person who believes in the Messiah, believes in, in Torah, because that's really my more of my background. But I mean, do Christian people, as, as you generally see them, do these strike you as individuals who are extremely knowledgeable about the Bible in general? And I would say the answer is usually no. It's very funny. The Bible, if, if a person wants to learn about the God of the Bible, if you will, learn about Christianity, they're probably going to be told to read the Bible. The Bible is 1,200 pages. It is an enormous task uh, to read these 1,200 pages. If a person does this, they're going to find a few very strange things. What One of the things they're going to find is that Christians are not represented in the Bible until roughly page 1,000 of 1,200 pages. In fact, the word Christian, I think, is used three times in the entirety of the Bible. Given that, it seems fair to me to say that the Bible is not about Christians. Ugh, that's like a tough one. That's hard to say. Uh if you look at Christian practices, you'll see that they go to church on Sunday. You'll see that they have a major holiday in spring called uh, Easter. There's a major holiday in the winter called Christmas uh, coming up right now. If a person then turns to the Bible to find those things, uh, you won't be able to find them. Uh, you'll find that everyone goes to church, if you will, on uh, Saturday, seventh day of the week. You'll find that there is no Christmas and there's no Easter nor command or instructions on how those days are to be kept, being they do not exist uh, in the Bible. So you have the major tenets of the religion. They don't exist in, in, in the text that they say is theirs. This same group of people are, are the people that are telling you that you live in the end of days. Uh, and I say to folks, go read the text for yourself. Go go look at some of these examples. Have you seen what some of these things say? Matthew 16, I think uh, 27 and 28, says something along the lines of, the Son of Man will return um, in the glory of his kingdom with the, the glory of his Father with his messengers and will reward each man according to his works. Truly, I tell you, some of you standing here will not taste death until they see the Son of God coming in his kingdom. And somehow that event hasn't happened. You know, um, you, you'll read a verse like 1 John 2.18 where he says, little children, it is the last hour. And then you'll read that very passage 2,000 years later in our present day, and you'll say, we live in the last hour. How does this make sense to a, to a person? Um, I mean, it got me too, man. For years and years and years, I, I, I was really about the end of days, last days belief structure. And I got to tell you, it's, it's substantially flawed. Even as messianics uh, were substantially flawed, there's this belief uh, based off of a few verses that God doesn't change. And I, I sometimes laugh because I'm one of the guys that really is a pusher, was a pusher of this very belief structure. Unfortunately, uh, God changes, man. Uh, he, he changed a, a good deal. God used to require animal sacrifices. You ever think about that? That the entire religious structure of the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is animal sacrifices. That's a unifying characteristic represented in nearly every book of the Bible. But no person today uh, that's a believer in the Messiah does animal sacrifice. Uh, God used to require it. He doesn't require it. That's a change. That's a substantial change. Uh, and speaking on the very same thing, you know, Jesus said, until heaven and earth pass, not one jot nor one tittle of the law will pass until all has been fulfilled. And we usually look at that passage and we say, has all been fulfilled? You know, or... Isn't that the same sky or the same ground that Jesus walked down? So Jesus has not returned. All has not been fulfilled. This is a very interesting view because the passage says that not a single jot nor tittle of the law would pass until all has been fulfilled. Consider our present day. 
all the jots and tittles regarding animal sacrifice, the sacrificial order, the Levitical priesthood, the temple, all of this stuff is gone, man. They passed away. Uh, they haven't existed for 2,000 years. If that doesn't mean passing away, I don't know what does. Um, again, showing you that you live at the end. So a couple little loose things there, but something to consider. Christians, the very individuals who you say don't know very much about the Bible are the people who are telling you uh, or the promoters of the, of the end of day doctrine. Really something to think about. Uh, a misguided group of individuals misleading other individuals. Very, very likely.